guys, it is Stephanie here from Pantry Living. I hope you are all doing well. I'm super excited for this video and tomorrow's video that are to come. But as you've probably noticed, over the past few weeks, we have been sharing some of our old content. Many of you know that we have a channel, Hickory Croft Farm, and some of this content was previously on that channel and we are moving it to this channel and we feel it is valuable and worth sharing with you guys. So without any further ado, we're gonna share an awesome video. It's actually from 2021. So this is a real throwback. It is nostalgic, honestly. Chris and I giggled when we watched it because it has its moments. But it is all about how we took our harvest to the pantry, which I think is something that many people have been asking us and curious on just how much food we grow to produce what we put in the pantry. So sit tight, stay tuned, and uh, hope you enjoy our oldie but a goodie. A question that we get asked all the time is, what do you do with so much food? How do you use all that food? How could you possibly need to grow that much food? Really, the how could you? Short answer is we eat it. Yes, we Long eat it. answer is what we're gonna talk about in a moment. So here is basically- This weekend's harvest. Yes, all out on the floor. Apples, tomatoes, yellow crooked neck squash, peppers. We're getting a pretty good haul of eggplants already. More beans. And uh, we actually dug up all of our uh, celery. Now the celery will be interesting because I wouldn't say it's fantastic, but I'm hoping for some soups and stews ground up nice and small. It will work. But And we're going to dehydrate the leaves yes. and uh, keep them for seasoning later. So the, ch the challenge for us is kind of documenting a little better than we normally do what all this food is going to get used for yes. uh, in the next little bit. And it won't be cat food as much as it looks like it right now. Apparently cats like beans, but... Um, but we want to take you on the journey as we take all of this and make it into something. And at the end of the week, hopefully, at the end of this video, uh, we will have this all made into jars of food for storage or frozen. So first step, we're going to weigh all this and see uh, how much it weighs. So one thing that I'm going to add to this as well, what we have harvested right now is stuff that had to be harvested at the time. It was going to go bad if we didn't pick it. So picking it is the process so that we can make it into something. But there will be things that we're still going to pick out of the garden that will go with these. For example, herbs. Uh, we have tons of herbs out in the garden. Parsley, basil, that's what I was trying to think of, oregano, all those sorts of things which are going to go into these sauces and juices and things that we're going to make. Now we haven't brought those in right now because we want to pick them fresh when we use them. Also, for example, the potatoes. Uh, if we need potatoes, we're going to go out and harvest them, but we haven't brought them in. So we will add that at the end of the video, telling you anything that we added to the process. But it's going to be interesting to see how many pounds of food this is, how many pounds of food we use by the end of it, and maybe we'll even include information on what we actually purchased to go in these, just to see how much we grew of what we made. So we've weighed in, and in total this weekend, we've harvested 246 and three quarter pounds. That is a lot of produce. And as I said in the video, we will still be harvesting other little bits to go with this. We're already started processing. I'll give you a sneak peek at Chris here. First thing that is happening is yellow tomatoes all go into the pot for juice. We would not be able to do everything that we do without this food mill. It gets used so much in a year and we just broke the handle on it. <laughs> we, the row we. We've got these to go through and then we're going to get that made into juice and then move on to the next thing. So as we're chugging through this mega harvest, uh, one of the things that we're going to do first is kind of get rid of everything that is not being canned. We have all of our beans and these basically are just going to be chopped up and flash frozen on a cookie sheet. I do not blanch my beans. I just put them on a cookie sheet, let them freeze, and then they all go into a nice bag that you can just grab handfuls at a time as you need them throughout the winter. So we already have a couple bags done like that and we're going to do these uh, red noodle beans the same way. These ones here, uh, they might just become a fresh meal because there's not really enough to do a whole tray in the freezer, but we'll see on that. And first up is to get all this dirt off of the uh, celery. And we're going to cut off all the leaves to get them in the dehydrator, and then we're going to at least get the stalk sitting in water. We did notice that they'd kind of, some of them had already gone a bit woody, so we're going to see how that works. But I'm going to get busy cleaning this up, 
And then we'll be cutting up beans so that we are ready for uh, canning after that. So we have reached kind of the end of the week. We were trying really, really hard to get everything of this 250 pounds processed before the next harvest came, which was this weekend. Uh, so we start, we harvested last Sunday. We videoed uh, the process throughout this week, showing you now what we've kind of, you know, made with that 250 pounds. And unfortunate, well, it's not unfortunate, but now we have the next harvest ready to go. So last step before we show you our final results uh, is to put these red peppers in the freezer for freezing for using later in stir fries, things like that. We're gonna transfer out our beans that are in the freezer right now and show you just how we do that. So we've already emptied one of our uh, frozen trays of beans that we chopped up from our noodle bean harvest uh, this week. But Chris is going to get us the next one out of this freezer. <laughs> our freezer is getting quite full of uh, frozen goodies. As you can see here, we've got tons of stuff that we've harvested out of the garden this year. Peppers, the uh, crooked neck squash. Um, we might have to get another freezer. But this is our little trick. I don't remember if we've actually shown this before. I think we have. But uh, we just chop everything up. There's no blanching or anything required. We just put it right onto a tray, let it fr flash freeze or freeze solid in this case because it's been a couple days since we've done it. And then we just put it in the bag. But it works so great because you can just grab what you need out of each bag. We just bring a, I bring a bowl down. Let's say I'm making a stir fry. I just bring a bowl down to the freezer, grab a couple handfuls of the crooked neck squash, a couple handfuls of peppers, a couple handfuls of beans, and it works out absolutely wonderful. So definitely this year we are well stocked on veggies for winter. So there you can see we got uh, one full, uh, that's the large, our large uh, freezer bags, the block freezer bags. So we got one of those full of our red noodle beans, which is fantastic. I think that means we have two full bags so far in the freezer and a whole bunch more beans to come. And Chris is about to spread out our cut up peppers. And this is how simple it is. You just cut them up, lay them out, be sure not to go too thick. Might spread them between yeah, the we've trays. got two trays, so uh, the, the rest will go on another tray, but and that's about it. Get them in the freezer and uh, let them freeze up. This is what is left from our harvest last weekend. We did not get to making our juice, so we have a lot of apples here, which I might swap that out and make applesauce. We'll see. Just kind of ran out of time, but that is still the plan. They still have some life left in them, so we're not canceling it out. But everything else that's pretty much on here, the eggplants, the squash, the peppers, even those tomatoes, we're going to make into another batch of ratatouille because this was our first time making this canned ratatouille and it was amazing. So we're going to do another double batch, but we were short on eggplants. So everything's kind of set aside for that, but uh, we'll come back to it with uh, the next harvest. Onions, we're on the fence on this. They didn't grow super great. I used a couple of the bigger ones, but we're almost thinking about just planting them in and seeing what they do. I don't know, watch this space because we haven't really figured out the plan for that. The beans actually got tucked up in a corner on a shelf and I forgot all about them, so we're gonna have them for dinner tonight. But I suppose the big finale here is what we did get canned this week. So we're gonna kinda start down at this end here. We have a couple rogue jars of stuff that basically didn't get processed, whether it was just I didn't have space or something like that, so they're just in the fridge. I'm not gonna worry too much about them, but we did get 10 jars of marinara, 11 jars of our lemon basil soup, which is actually uh, the soup from the video that I did on the rabbit soup. We just didn't put the rabbit meat in this time. This is just a veg vegetarian version. Some of that uh, wonderful pineapple white tomasal tomato juice that we are definitely going to be increasing the amount of those tomatoes we grow next year because it's amazing. Ratatouille, as I mentioned, we did get nine jars. We've already eaten some. It really was a big success, so we are going to double up on that for this few, this week here. I did finally get some more apple pie fill made. Yay! Only five jars. I might tackle another uh, round of that because I really would like to have a lot of apple pie fill, but it is time consuming, so we'll see how we do. Another one super, super proud of and, and happy with this time is our uh, Thai chili sauce. Anybody that kind of has the sweet chili that you get in the uh, stores and the bottles. Very similar, not quite exactly the same, but still very, very good. 
a whole bunch of tomato paste, which is awesome because I actually was using store-bought paste this year because I didn't make any last year. So now, well stocked up on paste for next year. These unlabeled guys over here are all pizza sauce, and it's amazing pizza sauce just with a little bit of heat. We already uh, did raid one jar and had homemade pizza. Really, really good. And surprise, surprise, another round of applesauce. So we ended up with uh, 12 jars of applesauce. Definitely want to keep going because, as you know, I have a goal of at least 100 jars of applesauce downstairs. I think we're getting to 78 now, so still a little bit ways to go. But all in all, a hard week of work, but worth it. So another benefit to the harvest that we actually uh, are starting is in this bucket. And uh, you can't really see it, but we are starting some apple cider vinegar. So we used the peelings and uh, whatnot that were in reasonable shape. We didn't use wormy bits <laughs> to start our, uh, our apple cider uh, concoction here. So we will uh, see how that goes. And I suppose that's an extra added bonus to that uh, apple harvest. So in the end, I don't think we did too bad with our harvest and what we've uh, processed and produced so far. Uh, the one thing I did mention earlier in the video was that I was going to let you know what we added. And this year, to be honest, carrots and onions have been horrible for us. We have not done well growing carrots and onions. So I did purchase, uh, to make all of this, we had nine pounds of onions, three pounds of carrots, and then there was things like the lemon juice, uh, which was, I think, almost a whole bottle, and salt and a few spices, uh, things like that. But otherwise, everything that's in these jars was produced here on the farm. So all in all, we had a great harvest week. We've managed to put away probably a good 30 individual meal portion type size things and a lot of condiments, which was, you know, a time consuming portion of canning. Uh, condiments take a lot of time to cook down, all that sort of stuff. So we got a lot of that put away. Still got more to make, but lucky for us, we just harvested another 121 pounds today from the garden. So we're going to get busy on next week's work and uh, who knows what we'll get up to. So what did you think? Didn't we look like young? I, that, that was the thing that really stood out to me. And we didn't have super great camera skills. I also will say that, and it is amazing what lighting can do, right? But we were in the novice stage, the channel was young then, and you know what? I'm really impressed with the message we were trying to get across. So I hope you enjoyed. Let us know down below what you thought, and stay tuned tomorrow, because tomorrow we're going to share another Harvest to Pantry video, but it's a lot newer than that one.